the international political scene. At once the Duce's son-in-law and protege, at 33, already Minister of Foreign Affairs, carries out the dictator's wishes with consummate skill. During the war in Spain, in Albania, and when forming the alliance with Hitler. But later, confronted with the specter of a Second World War, he becomes wary of that alliance. He won't be able to shed his own responsibilities, and his change of heart, which comes too little and too late, makes him suspect in the eyes of both Hitler and Mussolini. So, Ribbentrop, exactly what is it that Germany wants? A corridor to Poland, to the sea, to Danzig, or a... No. We want war. In less than two weeks, Warsaw will be ours. Oh. What then? Uh, will France and England just sit by and watch? Is that what you think? They'll sit by and watch, as usual. What makes you so sure? Uh, our foreign minister's judgment has always proven to be quite sound, Excellency. You forgive me, but um, an Italian dressing would have greatly improved this most beautiful salad, don't you agree? I've been meaning to tell you, Count Chano, that Italy needn't participate in this war. And even if she did, I don't think it'd make any difference. Mm, you may tell that to the Duce. I'm greatly relieved, Fira, because our pact allows for at least another three years before a war. Greatly relieved. We may retire now. The dinner is over. Baron von Ribbentrop, allow me to propose a wager between one minister and another. If you invade Poland without France and England intervening, then I will send you a Renaissance painting. But if France and England intervene and there is a full-scale war, then you will send me your collection of ancient armor. Is that agreed? You will surely lose. You lose no matter what happens. Count Chano. I shall write that in my diary, Fuhrer. <laughs> 